The Human Rights Campaign estimates that there are 2 million transgender people living in the United States today. Yet today's guest says the fight for human rights is not yet won, as long as transgender Americans lack equal rights under the law. He's Kylar brought us this week on Story in the Public Square. Hello and welcome to Story in the Public Square, where storytelling meets public affairs. I'm Jim Lutis from the Pell Center at Salve Regina University. And I'm G. Wayne Miller with the Providence Journal. This week, we're joined by Kylar Broadus, a pioneering advocate for transgender rights and the founder of Trans People of Color Coalition. Kylar, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Jim and Wayne. It's a pleasure. So you've been a longtime advocate for transgender rights. What are the issues we're basically talking about here? Well, now we're talking about assaults on our transgender youth right now. And we're talking about assault on transgender adults. Uh, it's, it's sort of both ways. Uh, the assaults on transgender adults have been forever And now, uh, since uh, the last administration, transgender youth have been used as a wedge issue and now are being attacked in state houses across the country. Uh, There were over 50 bills introduced across the country to target transgender youth uh, in school systems uh, and regarding transitional uh, related care uh, across the country. And so this has been a horrible year uh, for transgender youth. And if I may continue, uh, what that does is people don't understand that advocates like myself have fought to uh, with the American Medical Association, the Endocrine Association, and the American Psychological Association for these children to have the right to basically have puberty when they're supposed to have puberty, which is with other children. And for people that are not educated about transgender people, it's everywhere now. We have been here since the existence of time with all people. And I know that everybody has met somebody transgender, whether they want to, whether they've known it and whether they want to admit it or not. And I have to say, and before you ask me the next question, I was fortunate enough to have two parents, even back in my day, that understood and just loved their child and did the best thing for their child because I knew who I was the moment I could, before I could speak, and the moment I could articulate to other people that, no, you definitely are calling me the wrong gender. So you know, th- that is not true, though, for all parents. Um, I'm quite sure that's a correct statement. I- is that a correct statement? Uh, Wayne, I'm, uh, are you meaning that they that all parents don't embrace their children? Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. exactly. That's why I said that I was fortunate enough to have two parents that uh, loved their child enough to get that. That is not true for most transgender children. It's becoming more and more understood by parents. And I have had the pleasure to represent people that totally rejected their children, but learned and did education and came around. And I have represented them in court proceedings to get their child's name and gender marker changed and put the most resistant parent on the stand to say, I didn't get this, I didn't understand this, but I saw that my son wasn't my son, my son was my daughter. But most parents now are understanding the phenomena thanks to platforms, because I'm definitely pre-internet and uh, definitely wasn't on, although I was followed, followed by local media, because when I came out, it was decades ago, uh, but now you have Jazz Jennings, you have all these television shows, 
that are not influencing people, but just showing real lives. Uh, and that's what happened with me. And when I came out, there were people that had been in their houses for years just because they were transgender and afraid to come out. And they were living off of Social Security. So why would we want people that could work to live off of Social Security disability just because they were transgender? Doesn't mean you're disabled really at all. It just means uh, not that some people aren't, by the way, and happen to be transgender, but it just means that you happen to not fit into the rubric or the social construct that's been created uh, by folks. Because way back in grade school, I learned there was only, and I can't even remember, there was X, Y, X, X, whatever. And that's been proven by science to not be true either anymore. There's so many configurations of the chromosomes that that doesn't make you one or the other either. So there has been so much science and technology that's caught up as well to say this is a medical condition. It's not a mental illness and that these children need the intervention again because that's when their puberty is. I would have liked to capture my puberty. My parents try to bolt me out of the house and I don't mean literally, but try to get me out of the house to go do things. And that's why I literally talk on screen and people see me, but I am a loner because I was a loner as a child because I could not live the youth. And one of my biggest joy, joys was to finally do a conference with transgender youth and parents and see the joy these children have because they get to live their real life. And I lived in my head and pretended my parents knew something was going on, but there wasn't the words, the terminology, the information, or any of those things like there is now. But you're correct, uh, Wayne, is that a lot of parents don't know it or either deny it, and they kick their children out of their homes, and they don't love them, and that's the worst thing you can do. The suicide rate for transgender children is 70%. And I asked and asked when I was at that conference individually, each child, why they would choose, because many had records with suicide attempts, why you would choose suicide. And they said, because we just had no other recourse. Even when their parents did love them and support them, and even when they had people and mentors they could see, which is why I've stayed visible for so long, because I have actually looked the same and never changed. I've always looked uh, masculine, uh, but I had no visible mentors. So I thought really that something was wrong with me. And so that's why I've stayed to be a mentor. And my biggest thing in being visible was for youth and still is for youth. And I get told so many times, thanks for saving my life. And um, that makes me emotional right now because that's my only purpose in doing the work. Well, it's, it's a, it, it, it would have to make you emotional. I, Kyler, I, I'm wondering when we talk about anti-trans bias, it occurs to me that we're talking about two broad categories. There's the, the personal uh, uh, assaults and indignities that, that might literally be as, as grave as physical violence and, 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 and murder. Uh, but there's also the, the whole, uh, legal structure that's, that particularly seems to be energized now to try to deny uh, the, the dignity and individual self-worth of lots of trans uh, people, whether they are children or adults. Can we walk through some of those legal uh, 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 assaults that are taking place right now? Uh, you mentioned the, 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 the plethora of uh, uh, proposed legislation across state houses that seem to be uh, trying to attack everything from the, the, the bathrooms that people use to whether or not you can play high school athletics. Uh, yes, I can walk through some of those, definitely. Uh, the most egregious right now is in Florida, where they have, pa pa uh, I think they passed the law that there will be genital checks. Now, I don't know who else gets genital checks to determine uh, who they are. And by the way, uh, genital checks don't determine your 
biological sex. Uh, doctors just determined that the brain was a sex organ. And that's when I could keep up daily with everything that went on in the transgender world from medicine uh, and science to everything. And I did because I was expected and still am expected to be an expert on everything um, that has to do with actually the LGBTQ world and, and in particular the trans world. And so uh, doctors found out, and I remember talking to a doctor that that was her specialty uh, when I was out in LA for an event. And she said, yeah, we don't know everything. We're just learning and catching up. And so by looking at genitalia, what's that going to tell you? It's going to tell you nothing. And that's how doctors sex babies by a 30 second look in the ER or in the, I'm sorry, not the ER, but in the, uh, in the birthing room at a hospital when the brain itself is a sex organ. So this is egregious that now someone will be looking at your child's genitalia and have regular blood checks uh, to determine if they can play sports in Florida. Uh, to the next worst bill, which is in Arkansas, that goes all the way into college and says that you're banned from playing sports in college uh, because you're trans. And uh, that goes the farthest uh, up as far as grade level. They're, cre they're trying to solve a non-problem. You can probably count on two hands the number of trans youth playing sports. And, and particularly, they were targeting trans females, claiming that there was an advantage of trans females uh, against uh, non cisgender or non-trans females. Uh, I think there were two in the whole United States that actually play sports. Uh, there are more transmasculine, meaning people that look like me playing sports, and there were maybe five of those people. Because trans youth have a lot of fear about being attacked, just as trans adults do. And so they're working through all their other issues, as well as dealing with doctors and so forth. And so we're not very forthcoming uh, or trusting of other people. So to be out with a sports team or a court quote, coach that doesn't understand us and to not be with our parents who can protect us is not something we're just gonna jump out there and do. So what has happened is this whole syndrome of we are creating this to solve a problem that doesn't exist. And here are my theories on that. One, the last administration used this as a wedge issue, even though they didn't want anybody to check, check, to attack their child that was underage, it was fine to attack other children. And what better children to attack than trans youth? Secondly, it had to do with the whole Olympic issue with Samia Castor, who is intersex, and there is intersex means that you're uh, born with mixed and uh, or ambiguous genitalia, and therefore they kept checking, assuming that she was uh, doping up to beat people, and she was not, and the Olympic Committee saw that time and time again. And then thirdly, it's an attack on the current Biden-Harris administration, because I had the fortune of working with the Obama administration and VP uh, Biden. Uh, did I say Obama? Yeah, Obama and then VP Biden at the time. And uh, neither of them had a curb on this issue. They understood who trans people were, and are, and President Biden actually proceeded in announcement, although the Obamas had, were organizers, so they had worked with trans people regularly. But he had made a statement at, at some conference that this was the civil rights movement of transgender people. So they knew, he, he, and going into office, that he definitely is on board with protection. And VP Harris comes from the state of California, 
which is leading in this country in protections for transgender Americans and has never had a curb about protections for transgender Americans. So I think it's also a pushback against the federal administration that's made it clear that there will be no discrimination against transgender people in America. So state legislatures have been taking it upon themselves to give this pushback. So what is the mentality behind this terrible bias? Is it fear? Is it ignorance? Is it lack of education? I mean, you went through the science and you've talked about the, the professional groups, the experts. What is driving this? I mean, what would cause individuals to, to have this bias, which is reflected in laws in, in certain states, in many states, and, and, the, and violence and the attacks that you mentioned at the beginning of the show? What, what is the mentality? I, I don't profess to understand it. Wayne, you hit it on the head. It is fear. It is ignorance and it's lack of education. Uh, I always use an example of my cousin, one of my cousins, who isn't well read. Actually, she got a high school diploma, but because she loves me, she can tell you everything about transgender people. And I mean in detail from science to whatever. And she isn't internet savvy either uh, and has no curves. So it's lack of choosing to get educated on these issues and then it's fear because i used to do trainings before the internet and nobody knew i was transgender because just look at me and i look exactly i've always looked exactly like my father and so i would go out and do trainings and never disclose until the end of the training and people would say oh you're a fine person so i like you so at the end of the training, I would say, well, guess what? I'm transgender. And they would go, oh, it just doesn't really matter. And these people, and I would do it with my classes because I was a professor. And I actually had transitioned on this historically black college campus. And historically black colleges, college campuses typically are religious oriented. So I did it in my employment discrimination class and let everybody journal. And I didn't care if they belonged to the KKK. I let them own who they were uh, and be who they were. Because actually everybody thinks I'm a city boy, but I'm a country boy. Uh, so I let them own whoever they were and never criticized them for a moment. And as they went through real time with me, and got to know me, they embraced me. And that's it. And that's what I found in every single training that I've done. And I've done thousands and thousands of trainings is that once people get to know you, it's just a non-issue. But it's the people that, because uh, I went on the internet a few minutes before we got on and I lo looked for the actual Equality Act, and the first thing that pops up is this group that's against it that says, oh, it'll create these things. It's this fear mongering that occurs and that has happened uh, with people that just don't know or don't want to know. Uh, I'm not a dangerous person. It's just like saying I'm dangerous because I'm a black man, that I'm going to steal your stuff and do this, that, and the other. It's the same sort of fear mongering. And sadly, because, and I do recognize I have privilege because I look and have always embodied masculinity and could never use female bathrooms and have literally been drug out of them by the police. And the last time was at the House of Blues in LA when I was with my corporate coworkers and they knew I had an F on my birth certificate. So I stood at the doors. I tried not to drink anything, first of all. And I, for folks that don't know, the House of Blues is a is a nightclub. So we went, and I was like, okay, I'm not going to drink anything, including water. <laughs> so I'm like sitting there for the first hour or so, and I'm like, no, no water, no nothing, no nothing. Then I start to drink water, and then I'm like, okay, I've got to go to the bathroom. What do I do? And, uh, you know, L.A. is a hard city to get around in, so it's not like you can run to the gas station and go to the restroom, which is sadly at the time what a lot of 
corporate workers were doing that were trans in their office buildings because they were denied the right to go to the bathroom in their office buildings. And it was legal to do that way back then. So I went to the women's room because I was with a group of people that knew I had an F on my uh, birth certificate. And I got drug out of there naked to the men's room by the police. To the oh, men's room. Wow. That's, so that's just that's horrifying. For people. And it is horrifying. And it's like, okay, sure. Uh, just drag me through this place naked to the men's room. No problem. And so this happens to me and imagine what happens to people that, uh, you know, we're not hired just for being trans. And I've watched people build up careers, including myself and leave them. And we're not hired. And I go around to law schools and talk to law schools. I train, at, uh, I get to train other law, law professors, but we are typically not hired once we leave our professional job and that's something i'm going to eventually write a book about um and and i have to warn other people that when you choose to leave that professional job you don't have the same option as other people do and it amazes me law students will ask well god you seem so competent why aren't you teaching over here why aren't you teaching over there it's because i'm i'm not hireable <laughs> Well, kind of uh, that takes it. I know what it takes it a little off course from the children, but that's the reality of trans people not in this country. But it's just not in this country. It's global, but it shouldn't be happening in what we call not a third world world country. Right, Kylar, you 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 mentioned the Equality Act, and we've got about uh, three minutes or so left here. Uh, I wonder, uh, you had a hand in in drafting the Equality Act. Uh, this is a piece of legislation before Congress. Can you just give us a, a, a broad sense of of what it would actually do to address some of these systemic biases that we've been talking about? Well, it would give us a leg up. So instead of opening the 1964 Civil Rights Act, it would add those same protections for transgender people and not only transgender people, but people that are LGBTQ. And so that we would have a right to protection for employment, though that we would have a right for protection for credit. And we would have a right to use the restroom uh, and it would prevent this whole uh, bathroom panic issue. It's like, you know, I've been going to the men's room forever and no man has panicked, although I have been almost attacked because I'm well known uh, in the area where I came out at and I almost have, have been attacked, you know, there just because I'm going to the bathroom. I'm just going to the bathroom. We all have to go to the bathroom. It would protect us in credit and fair housing and all of these things. I get called on from many states and many places to help represent people that get caught in these positions. It would prevent people from using their religiosity against us. Uh, and uh, I know we only have three minutes left, but I have trained at almost every religious place and, they, and the people that are good folks in those religions find texts that include trans people. And it's like all religions, and I went to a religious undergrad institution, all embrace everybody with love. So uh, that's the short of what it would do on federal funding, and, and there's several other things. And I'm happy to say the House passed it. Uh, I had testified previously for the Employment Discrimination Act, but that was not enough. It cut us short and allowed people to discriminate against us. So it was time for a new vehicle, and that vehicle is the Equality Act. And we need people to support that, to write their Congress people, particularly their senators, because it's passed Cong the House, and we need the senators to take that up and to take action and protect all Americans. They are voted for by all Americans, and that includes transgender Americans. What are the chances in the Senate, do you think? About 30 seconds. Well, well, you know, in this climate, it's hard to say. Before we had the previous commander in chief, we thought we had a great chance actually of it passing under a Republican 
uh, president. Because if you look back at a lot of legislation that's been uh, against uh, discrimination, it's passed under a Republican president. So, uh, but uh, nobody could have predicted what will happen, what would have happened, what did happen rather. I'll say that, what did happen. And so we didn't get a traditional politician. And as a result of that, things shifted greatly. So we don't have as many sponsors on that bill and we don't have the Senate doing what it needs to do. We got to leave it there, unfortunately, but Kyler brought us, thank you so much for being with us. That's all the time we have this week. But if you want to know more about Story in the Public Square, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter or visit PellCenter.org. For Wayne, I'm Jim, asking you to join us again next time for more Story in the Public Square.